In the pre-hospital world, we have a phrase, the golden hour, whereby we try and get a patient who has suffered a serious illness or injury to hospital within that hour to have definitive treatment. We also have a phrase called the platinum 10 minutes. The first 10 minutes of somebody who's having a life-threatening illness or injury is where all the real life-saving stuff happens. And that's not often the ambulance service that do that. It's you watching this video. During these episodes, we're gonna be looking at some of these life-saving techniques and how you can use these to help save someone's life. You're watching The 10 Minute Medic. Today's episode is about catastrophic bleed. What does that mean? Well, it means that somebody has sustained an injury that has severed an artery, and our job is to stop that blood really quickly. Catastrophic bleeds can be caused by blunt trauma or penetrating trauma. So somebody may have fallen off a motorbike, fallen off a height, have been involved in a car accident, or somebody that might have been paled on an object or stabbed. So how much blood have we got inside us? So I weigh around 87 kilograms. An average adult male will have 70 mils per kilogram of blood around their body, which means that I will have 6.1 liters. The amount of milk we have here represents the amount of blood that I have in my body. After 10%, this will probably mean no difference to the way I'm gonna be acting. I will probably feel a little bit dizzy if I stood up, but otherwise my heart rate and my breathing rate would remain the same. As you can see, it's down to 20% now. I'm now starting to feel a little unwell. My heart rate will start to elevate. My respiratory rate will start to rise. As we go down to 30%, I'm starting to become agitated. I'm quite anxious now and quite pale and cold and clammy. My heart rate will be elevated and my respiratory rate will be elevated. As it decreases to 40% blood loss, I will become unconscious. My breathing will become erratic and you probably won't be able to feel a pulse. Anything further than 40%, I'm starting to die. This episode is sponsored by Bleed Control UK, who have kindly donated one of their bleed control kits. An aid memoir, two tourniquets, two trauma shears, three packs of four nitrile gloves, trauma dressings 10 by 18, two of those, trauma dressing 15 by 18, one of those, a vented chest seal, a packing gauze, two foil blankets, and a marker pen. Before we start any life-saving intervention, we must make sure that we're safe. We also need to make sure that 999 or 112 is called so that the emergency services are on their way. We've identified our catastrophic bleed marked by the X. We're going to put the tourniquet three to five inches above the wound and pull it tight. Velcro strap will be snug underneath. We're then going to turn that windlass two or three times until the bleeding has stopped. If the bleeding hasn't stopped, we can then put another tourniquet above this tourniquet. And on this casualty, I'm going to choose to place that above the elbow. We don't want to place it on a joint. So the second tourniquet will go above the joint, nice and tight. And then we turn the windlass two, three or four times until the bleeding has stopped. We can then place it into the receptor, secure it with our Velcro, and then we can write the time that we've placed the tourniquet on onto the Velcro there. Once the tourniquet is in place, we still have a wound that we need to care for. What we can do is use one of the 10 by 18 bandages that come with the kit. Open the bandage, place the bandage on top of the wound and wrap it nice and tight. We can then secure it in place using the Velcro end of the bandage. It's a belt and braces approach to try and stop that catastrophic bleed to the lower limb. For injuries marked in areas where we've got the green, we're going to use the packing gauze. So the first thing we do is we open the packing gauze, identify where the wound is, open up the gauze, find the end of the gauze, 
and then we're going to press the gauze into the wound like this, unraveling it as we go, pushing that gauze in. until we've got some gauze protruding at the top of the wound. And then we're gonna press down and hold that for three to five minutes or until the ambulance arrives. With a penetrating chest injury, the problem isn't so much with the catastrophic bleeding, it's with the lung collapsing. So we're gonna use a chest seal. So the first thing we need to do is we need to expose the chest. So we're gonna use our trauma shears in the pack to cut through the t-shirt to expose the actual wound itself. You'll notice that the actual wound probably won't be bleeding that much, but we'll dry it off using the patient's t-shirt before we actually put the um, chest seal over the top. We open the chest seal so the sticky side is exposed and then we place the middle of that chest seal onto the wound itself and we make sure that that is nice and secure and press it down to get a good seal. With a penetrating injury to the abdomen, we first need to identify the wound. Use the trauma shears to cut away clothing so the wound is visible. Using the large 15 by 18 dressing, press the padded part onto the wound and apply firm pressure to stop the bleed. Once we've stopped that bleed and we're waiting for the emergency services to arrive, it's really important that we keep our casualty warm. The reason for that is blood clots really well when it's warm, but it slows down when it's cold. So it's really important to put a blanket over your casualty and keep them warm. This episode has kindly been sponsored by Bleed Control UK. If you'd like a discount on your next purchase, please use the code on the screen. Hopefully you've liked this video. Hopefully it's given you some confidence in able to save a life. If you did enjoy the video, press like and subscribe to the channel. See you next time.